let's talk about the moon. I've spent the last 10 years of my photography career avoiding the moon in a sense, carefully planning so many of my photo shoots around dark sky conditions and minimal moonlight. I got my first taste of moon photography with the Sony 100-400mm GM lens, which was just long enough on my Sony a7 to be able to capture a little bit of fine detail on the lunar surface. These early photographs were just a taste of lunar photography and the challenges and rewards that it has to offer. Fast forward to today and I've upgraded my equipment, I've learned some new techniques, and I've shot some of my favorite lunar images to date. What if I told you that the single most impactful upgrade that I made to my lunar photography was trading my $2,000 full frame camera for a lower resolution small sensor camera that cost me only $200. When I started this project, I had my Sony a7C attached to the Sivbony SV50370ED. The biggest and most obvious hurdle with lunar photography is field of view. My telescope has a focal length of 420 millimeters, which means that on my full frame camera, the angular field of view is over three degrees from top to bottom. So the moon at only half a degree in diameter fills only about one sixth the height of the frame. And that means I'm only able to use a small fraction of the resolution of my full frame sensor. In order for the moon to fill the frame of my full frame sensor from edge to edge, to utilize as much of the camera sensor as possible, I would need a much larger telescope with an equivalent focal length of about 2000 millimeters. The first and most obvious issue with this upgrade path is cost and size. Decent telescopes with that long of a focal length start to become relatively expensive and are usually much larger in terms of size and weight. But an alternate approach to getting more telephoto reach and the one that I chose to take is to ditch the full frame camera and instead take advantage of the ultra high pixel density of a tiny sensor camera. By using a small sensor, it's possible to achieve a longer equivalent focal length by taking advantage of the camera's crop factor and higher pixel density. My very best images to date were made with this tiny one over 1.7 inch sensor on an old discontinued camera called the Pentax Q. With it, I was able to dramatically improve my lunar photography. The one over 1.7 inch sensor has a crop factor of 4.65. So with a 420 millimeter focal length telescope, that puts my equivalent field of view at nearly 2000 millimeters, which means that the moon nearly fills the frame from edge to edge, making it possible to utilize most of the resolution of the camera's sensor. My 24 megapixel full frame A7C sensor has a pixel density of about 2.87 megapixels per square centimeter. By comparison, my 12 megapixel Pentax QS1 has a pixel density of 29.3 megapixels per square centimeter, more than 10 times that of the full frame A7C. So just by switching to a smaller sensor camera, I've improved the captured resolution of the moon by more than 10 times. So this is the route that I would generally recommend if you're looking to jump into high resolution lunar photography. Rather than getting a huge telescope for your full frame camera, consider using a smaller sensor on a smaller telescope. For making highly detailed photos of the moon, I personally recommend a telescope and camera combination that gives you a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length somewhere between 1200 millimeters and 2000 millimeters. Anything much longer than about 2400 millimeters and the full disk of the moon might not quite fit into the frame. All of these focal lengths are 35 millimeter equivalent, which means that they take into account the crop factor of our sensor in order to give us an equivalent focal length that resembles the focal length that we would have used on a 35 millimeter full frame camera to achieve the same field of view. If you want a fast way to figure out 35 millimeter equivalent focal lengths and angular fields of view with any camera and lens combination, I recommend the PhotoPills app Field of View Calculator. 
In this case, I can use the calculator to target a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length of 2000 millimeters and find out that I would need a telescope with an actual focal length of 430 millimeters to get there with my Pentax QS1. You can also use this tool conversely to figure out what field of view you'd get with any given focal length telescope. It can be helpful in this case to remember that the maximum angular size of the moon is about 0.56 degrees. So any camera and lens combination that has a field of view that's smaller than this means that the moon won't fully fit into the frame. If you wanna completely skip the math part and just wanna know about some great camera and telescope combinations for moon photography, check out our equipment kit guide for lunar photography on lonelyspec.com. So just for reference, here's a breakdown of my entire lunar photography kit. I have the Sivbini SV503 70ED telescope and the Pentax QS1 camera. In order to mount the camera to the telescope, I have two adapters, a T-mount adapter, which brings the two inch opening on the optical tube assembly of the telescope down to a threaded T-mount. And then I have a T or T2 to Pentax Q-mount adapter to be able to attach that threaded T-mount to the bayonet mount of the camera. Additionally, I have a simple finder scope to make the composition a little bit easier. All of this is mounted very simply to a regular carbon fiber tripod with a large lens pan tilt head made from a panorama rotator mount and a monopod tilt head. Since most exposures of the illuminated part of the moon can be relatively fast on the order of 1 100th to 1 500th of a second, it's possible to still use a regular fixed tripod. That said, the Earth still rotates at 15 degrees per hour, so that means that it only takes about two minutes for the moon to appear to move a full diameter distance across the frame. This means that at 2000 millimeters, the moon can scoot out of the frame pretty quickly. So while it's not strictly necessary, if you wanna keep the moon in frame for a much longer period of time, a tracking equatorial mount will give you the best overall shooting experience. Shooting without a tracking mount just means that we'll need to reframe the moon every couple minutes due to the rotation of the Earth. One thing of note is that tripod stiffness matters a lot when shooting with a really long equivalent focal length. With my relatively lightweight travel tripod fully extended, it can still take about four to five seconds for the tripod to fully settle after handling the camera or adjusting the composition. Shorter tripod legs are always stiffer, so just by shortening my tripod so that only two sections are extended, it brings the settling time down to about two seconds. The final important piece of gear in my kit is a remote trigger for the camera. Since I'm shooting with a very long equivalent focal length, even the slightest vibration can result in a blurry photo, so it's best if we can trigger the shutter without touching the camera. My Pentax QS1 supports the use of an infrared remote, and I can also fall back on the camera's built-in interval timer to be able to shoot multiple photos without touching the camera. So this is the equipment that I've been using over the last few months to shoot the moon. I'm pretty happy with how most of my shots have turned out with this gear so far, especially given the amount of money that I've needed to invest in it. One of the things that was immediately apparent when trying to figure out uh, how to build my lunar photography kit was that these small sensor cameras uh, really aren't very easy to find. The only options for a small sensor interchangeable lens camera that have a sensor smaller than micro four thirds are the Pentax Q and Nikon one lines of cameras. And they've been discontinued for several years now. So the only way to buy one of these cameras is to find them used off of a site like eBay. And I think that's kind of a shame because there's actually a very tangible and real benefit to being able to use a small sensor camera for really long reach telephoto shots like this. There is of course the option of going with a dedicated astronomy camera that's made to be hooked up directly to a telescope, but most of these cameras need to be controlled by some kind of computer, be that a laptop or a dedicated astrophotography computer like the ASI Air by ZWO. I personally wanted my lunar photography kit to be relatively compact, simple, and easy to transport and set up. So the idea of having to attach my camera to another computer or having to control it with an app uh, was just kind of a turnoff for me. So that's why I went with the Pentax QS1 as my choice for astrophotography camera. So after having used this tiny point and shoot sized camera, for lunar photography, it's just sort of made me wish that there was a modern version of the Pentax Q.
The moon is a subject that's so familiar to all of us, but when I see it up close in fine detail, I can't help but think that this thing that I've seen countless times suddenly appears strange and foreign, almost alien. Perhaps there's something about putting in the work to shoot and edit these images that makes seeing each crater and mountain ridge feel like it's being revealed for the first time in history. I imagine it's a little bit like what Galileo felt when he first turned his telescope to the moon and made the first close-up sketches of craters on the lunar surface. Maybe it feels alien because I know it was the last visited outpost of humanity's final frontier, stood upon only a handful of times and then abandoned for the last half century, always in view and seemingly so close, yet also so far away, a constant reminder that there's more for us to discover, and it's somewhere out there. So after a decade of completely avoiding the moon, I'm glad that I took this detour into the realm of lunar photography. Thanks to this tiny camera, I'll likely never look at the moon the same way ever again. Thank you so much for joining me on this one. If you want to purchase any of the gear that I mentioned in this video, such as the Pentax QS1, I've provided affiliate links that go to my channel in the description, so please consider starting there. And on my next video, I'll cover how I plan, shoot, and process my moon photos, so be sure to subscribe. And in the meanwhile, you can check out all of our gear reviews, tutorials, and inspiration on LonelySpec.com.